Good morning, everyone. This is Senior Pastor at Heritage Presbyterian Church, <laughs> Pastor Mike Philibert, whoever I am, uh, here for morning prayer on this frigid, freezing, frosty uh, morning here in Oklahoma, uh, where all the trees just keep, unfortunately, shedding their branches in loads and loads. Um, anyways, I want to say happy birthday this morning to Lincoln Dutcher. Happy birthday, Lincoln. We're going to pray for you in a little bit. Um, as we start morning prayer, we finished yesterday with the shorter Westminster Shorter Catechism. Today, I would like to begin with um, the Heidelberg Catechism. The Heidelberg Catechism was written in the 16th century, written in the midst of uh, famines and pandemics and high mortality rates. It was written for kids for them to re remember and have uh, a foundation in the midst of all that. And so today we are at uh, Lord's Day 1, which is question 1 and 2. What is your only comfort in life and in death that I, with body and soul, both in life and in death, am not my own, but belong to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who with his precious blood has fully satisfied for all my sins and delivered me from all the power of the devil, and so preserves me that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head, yea, that all things must work together for my salvation. Wherefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready henceforth to live unto him. How many things are necessary for you to know that you in this comfort may live and die happily? Three things. First, the greatness of my sin and misery. Second, how I am redeemed from all my sins and misery. And third, how I am to be redeemed from redemption. Well, that was the Heidelberg Catechism, questions one and two. So we're now at our Bible reading, which is Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 23. Mark 7, 1 through 23. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of the disciples ate with, their, ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders, and when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching this as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me as korban, whatever you would have received from me in your retirement, I've given over to God, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. That was Mark chapter 7, 1 through 23. Let's pray. Well, Lord God, we pray that you would help us to see and remember and recall that it's not um, necessarily really garbage in, garbage out. The garbage is already there. And so we ask you to help us. Help us, Lord, to fight against that which defiles us from within. Thank you for your grace, Lord Jesus, that in, that in your, your incarnation and your 
sacrificial death and resurrection, we have hope that we can overcome those things because you have over overcome them. Lord, we pray for Lincoln, that you would bless him at, on this his birthday. May it be a, a great day, even with all the rain and ice and such. Um, may it be a good day to remember how you have cared for him through the years. And I pray that this coming year would be full of joy and peace and that you would lift his heart and that he would grow in the, in the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Lord, we pray for uh, backyard missions. I pray for um, uh, Matt and uh, Fiora, Fiorella Muse who run that. And I pray that you would continue to bless them in their work as they have conversations with international students from different religions and uh, bring the gospel to them. Um, we pray for Joe and Elizabeth and their kids. We ask you to fill their home with sunshine, with, with rays of hope and joy and uh, bless them with good health and watch over them, Lord. And we pray for Dan and Becky Young, who are working with uh, our mission agency in North Mexico. Bless them in their work. Give them patience and resilience. Continue to guide them and direct them in the way they should go and, and how they should uh, proceed, Lord, and provide them with funds. We pray, Lord, for over 2,400 children in Peru and their families and the church partners there who have been hit by frost and cold temperatures. That sounds familiar that are creating serious health issues for them, Lord. We pray that you'd grant them relief and uh, strengthen them and uh, grant them recovery. We pray for Lieutenant Colonel Mark Levine uh, with the U.S. Army as a chaplain at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Thank you that he's completed his doctorate program, and uh, we ask you to open new doors of ministry opportunities for him and enrich him and his family and provide for them deeply. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, here in the midst of uh, what's going on in Oklahoma, where over 300,000 people are without power. We thank you so much for OG&E and other utility workers who are out there right now in the freezing cold, in the ice, in um, the wind, um, who are seeking and striving and working hard to restore that power. We pray that you would protect them and bless them and be with those without power. And we pray for relief. We pray that uh, this would be speedy a speedy recovery, and that you would watch over them. Lord, we thank you that we do have comfort in life and in death, that you are our only hope, Lord Jesus, and that because of that, we can face whatever comes with resilience. Lord, we pray that, um, um, Almighty God, you who have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, grant us your people to be joined together in such unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we would be made a holy temple acceptable unto you through Jesus Christ our Lord. And almighty, most merciful God of your bountiful goodness, keep us, we beg you, keep us, keep us from all things that may hurt us, so that we being ready, both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things which you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll be back tomorrow and pick up where we left off, both in the Heidelberg Catechism and in Mark 7. Until then, stay warm, stay safe, and the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.